Welcome to our series of lectures on perception as part of a cognitive psychology course at Cal State University, Northridge. So perception is a topic that I just adore and I feel really strongly about it. And yeah, I think you'll pick that up during the lectures. But perception is a study of how we make sense of the world. And we get uh, input, sensory input that we need to make sense of um, from all different sensory organs, right? So I've got my eyes, I've got my ears, I've got my skin, all of that information is coming into my brain and I need to make sense of it. So how in the world do I do that? Well, first thing to do is we need to be really clear about two terms, sensation and perception. So sensation is uh, the information that your sensory receptors encode. Right? So when light falls in my eyes and it stimulates the receptors in the back of my eyeballs, that's sensation. Okay? Perception is how we interpret and organize that information. So one is what the neurons are telling us at a low level, right? the sensory receptors in my skin or in my ears or in my retina. Um, and the other perception is how we interpret that information. And that's going to turn out to be important in just a second. But in, in um, I want to point out on this slide two things. Sensation is sort of like what a camera does, an old-fashioned camera does. It records the image. It doesn't make any judgments about it. The camera doesn't interpret the image. It just records it. That's sensation. Perception, I think you can get an understanding of it if you look at this great drawing from uh, an old advisor of mine, uh, Roger Shepard. Um, notice it's just an elephant, uh, but if you try to count the elephant's legs or feet, you might notice that there's something funny going on, right? Hard to perceive, hard to interpret, hard to organize. It's a perceptual challenge. Here's the thing that fascinates me so much about perception. We assume that we perceive the world as it is, right? But we don't. Perception is not an exact replica of what is actually out there, nor is it a precise re replica of what uh, our sensory organs tell us. There's some big differences between sensation and perception. Um, for reasons that I'm going to focus on in this lecture, um, perception, our perceptual processes have to reconstruct the outside world to steal a line from the comic Lily Tomlin, we have, reality is a collective hunch. We have to take our best guess as to what's out there. And we have to reconstruct that world. And we reconstruct that world based on some uh, innate principles, um, but also experience during life and expectations. Um, it is really hard for us to accept the idea that what we perceive is different from what's actually out there. Um, and in the US right now, as uh, there are debates and uh, calls for increased social justice, it's sometimes hard for people to wrap their, eye, wrap their ideas, wrap their mind around the fact that different groups of people in the US have had different life experiences. And as a result of that, they perceive the world differently. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's just perception, it how it works. It's how it works. Our perception is determined by our past experiences to a large extent. So for example, in the in the drawing I'm showing here, you know, obviously there's no old man in this figure, and yet obviously there is the head of an old man in this figure. Um, let me give you another example um, to prove to you that your experience um, determines what you perceive. So um, you see a couple of pictures of upside down faces. They just look like upside down faces. Doesn't seem to be anything special about them. And the words below those upside down faces clearly say the cat. And you might be thinking, well, what, what is Maggie talking about here? Well, let me take those faces all I'm going to do is rotate them so that you see the faces upright. 
Do the faces look a little funny now? At least one of them in each pair? Yeah. This is called the Thatcher illusion. Uh, and in each pair of pictures, one of the faces has the eyes and the mouth cut out and flipped upside down. That is so easy for us to see when the faces are up, upright. And it's very difficult for us to see when the faces are upside down. It's there in both cases. It's just that we have a lifetime of experience with upright faces. And so we are experts at analyzing upright faces. But when it comes to upside down faces, we don't have much experience with upside down faces. And so our perceptual sensitivity is less. We are not as sensitive to upside down faces as we are to upright faces. So when an upside down face has something kind of goofy with it, we don't see it. It's there, but we don't see it. How about the words the cat? Why am I showing you that? Well, what I want you to see is it both the H in the and the A in cat are actually the same letter, right? But we interpret that figure as the word, as a letter H when it's surrounded by the letters for the, T and E, and we perceive that same letter as an A when it's surrounded by a C and a T. Same figure interpreted in two different ways right before your eyes. Perception, it's amazing. Um, why am I talking about perception in a cognitive psychology class? Well, because you can't perceive things without cognition. You can't perceive things without knowledge, prior experience. Um, and why is that? So for reasons we'll talk about more in the next mini lecture, it turns out that a lot of visual stimuli have ambiguities in them. In other words, either the whole picture or aspects of the picture can be interpreted in multiple ways. So for example, in one figure here, you might see a duck laying on its back, looking up at the sky, or you might see a bunny in the grass looking to the left. Uh, in another picture, you might see a man with a big nose playing a saxophone. But if you look at that picture a little longer, you might see the face of a woman. They're both there. Uh, on the far right is a picture of either a skull or two women um, from the looks like 1800s dress uh, who are together by candlelight. Stimuli are actually ambiguous. What we see can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. And we're gonna talk about why the structure of your visual system renders some images, lots of images, all images ambiguous. Come right back. <laughs>